This is the Vortex 3 automating system, the part that is mounted inside the fuselage. It's made out of a servo tray that holds four servos, two push rods, and a rib system that supports the push rods so that the, the ge geometry during the uh, movement of the ailerons is kept correct. And so you have a very uh, a good, uh, precise system in terms of backlash and uh, hysteresis. Everything goes back to center and very, very low backlash. Um, this uh, rib system also allows a uh, mounting of a uh, ballast. Um, the, there's a, like a, a cage system here that the ballast can go through. And if you have a, a lots of ballast, it can even pass after the aft rib. So you can uh, put inside the fuselage a very uh, large amounts of ballast, over 100 grams, no problem. And it basically, the cage system keeps it from rattling around and uh, hitting the push rods so um, uh, everything uh, keeps on working even though you have lots of ballast inside uh, this entire system weighs about one and a half grams so it's very very light it's gonna come pre-installed uh, inside the fuselage uh, these two tubes allow routing of the strings from the tails to the servos and to make it easier to route them and also to um, avoid uh, 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 the strings getting in the way of the uh, push rod system uh, this entire system will be mounted in the factory even though it's pretty easy to mount it's basically just push being pushed back and pushed into the fuselage uh, but it will come pre-glued in order to make sure that that the aft rib is in the right alignment and that you don't have any difference in, in geometry. Here you see the automating system from the side of the wing. It's made out of two horns that are fork-like in shape. They are glued into the ailerons and they have a support pin in the center in order to relieve loads from the hinge. Um, uh, these horns are designed to uh, be self-aligning as much as possible so you can uh, introduce the wing to the fuselage at a fairly uh, high angle of uh, deflection from the uh, from the amount uh, uh, actually required uh, when you uh, push it onto the fuselage basically locks into the links inside um, that are held by the rib system Okay, so this is how I install the uh, the push rods. I already glued in the servos. Uh, I don't have four servos yet; uh, two are on the way. So I use the plastic models from the three D model. Um, what I do is I place it like this and bring it all the way to the middle hard to see but to the middle of the slot okay now once it's in the middle of the slot what I do is I take a piece of masking tape and I line it up in the middle of the slot then I put the piece of tape just to hold it in place That way, it sits in the middle, it's lined up, and it's straight. After I do this to the second one, I'll do the front, uh, I'll connect the front servos. Now that both links are in their place, what I need to do is I, I uh, install the wing, I connect the wing onto the fuselage with the screws and everything, just that everything lines up, and then the push rods won't go anywhere when I take the tape off. To mount the wing on the fuselage, you first line up the uh, horns with the grooves on the side. The pins of the horns need to be lined up with the grooves uh, on the side of the fuselage. Next, you take the wing, you line it up at the front, and once the ailerons are about 10 millimeters off, it just clicks into place, and that's it. There. They're held in place. 
next thing I would I'm going to do is I'm going to put the screws in after which I will glue the um, front part the z-band into the push rod uh, once the servo is uh, under um, voltage and, and centered okay so now you can see the push rod that is held here by the masking tape they're uh, moving with the ailerons next step is to install the servo horn and the uh, z-band onto the push rod and the servo uh, I'm using the reverse horns on the, the upside down horns on the KST because the KST is a little bit taller than the MKS the MKS fits in uh, at a, a little bit lower than the, than the KST um, what I do is I have the z-band on the bottom I just put it through the push rod and snap it into place it's uh, uh, centered uh, by the servo tester and when it's centered and it's directly straight uh, I will set this to about 13 millimeters down that should give me 30 millimeters up and close to 40 millimeter millimeters of uh, a down moving uh, 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 aileron for the flaps uh, for the flap position so I will set this here at the uh, right uh, height and then I would add some CA uh, wick some CA into the push rod until it sets basically I just pull it back a little bit put some CA and then push it down back down okay I'm going to wick some CA I pulled the, uh, the servo all the way forward I'm using thick CA I'm adding a few drops Moving the push rod so it goes in. Now I'm centering the push rod, adding a little bit more CA. Now I'm going to measure 10, 12 millimeters, 13 millimeters on the bottom, and I'm going to hit it with some accelerator so I will hope that you can see this I'm going to measure it here and then I'm going to kick with some accelerator in the front after the CA dries I remove the push rod and then I wrap it I wrap the end with a little bit of sewing thread just so it doesn't split under loads and uh, after it dries up I hit it with some C thin CA after it dries up I cut the leftovers and it's ready to use. Uh, sometimes it's better to put a small bend in the Z uh, in the in the this piece of the push rod in the metal piece so that this part here clears the servos doesn't touch the servos. So just a little bend about mm, five maybe ten degrees no more than that, and uh, that's it. The servo the push rod is uh, ready for final installation. Okay, so now. Everything is mounted, everything is connected, everything is, is, is installed in the aileron system. It's very, very tight in the middle. Very, very tight. Um, I'm getting about 13 millimeters of aileron uh, moving up and 40 millimeters of uh, ailerons uh, uh, of flaps. So 40 millimeters of flap, which is quite a bit, and 13 millimeters of aileron. automating system
thinking about. That's it. To thread the strings for the tails, what I do is I thread it from the back and then I just fish it out from the holes uh, on top here and then I just thread it into the tubes have to be careful not to get the wire bent after it's pushed all the way from here then I will pull it from the front and that's it for the canopy solution I added two pieces of carbon front and back with the uh, reinforcement of the uh, fiberglass and I use a round file in order to make a groove front and back uh, in the fuselage now when it's engaged so it holds the canopy from side to side in order to mount the canopy I just put it in the front groove and then slide it back to the aft groove and then it just sits snugly up on the fuselage. To remove it, I just do it in reverse. That's it.